Operation Winter is nearing its end, and that means that we have access to the top reward vehicles. For naval, this is the MPK PR-201K, a rank 4 battle rating 3.3 .3 coastal vessel. Let us see just what this vessel is made of. First off, the most noticeable difference, the main armament. And this is already where we find a bit of a problem, because according to the game, the rear single mounted automatic 45mm gun is the main armament. But I tend to disagree, but more on that later. So, this automatic 45mm gun. On paper, not a bad gun, with a high velocity shell, decently high rate of fire, good gun arcs and good reverse rates. But there is one fatal flaw. This gun carries no armor piercing rounds whatsoever. In case you are familiar with the battle rating of 3.3, you'll realize that this is not good. It is so bad in fact that it loses out in damage output to the other gun armament of the 201K. The secondary armament, the twin 25mm mount located at the front of the ship. Quite a good gun with the ammo capacity of 130 rounds split between the two barrels. These guns have a decent rate of fire and this ammo load is surprisingly long lasting. And that's good too as it takes 10.4 to 8 seconds to reload these guns depending on your crew. And that's quite a long time to not be able to shoot back and probably the only saving grace of the 45mm gun, as it has practically no reload between the 4 round clips. The twin 25mm guns however do get an armor piercing belt, which is my personal preference of belt to use, though the stock belt does also contain some armor piercing shells. It isn't all good for this twin mount, it has a glaring weakness, and that's the inability to fire forward due to the hull shape of the ship. Not the greatest problem, but it'll come back to bite in just a moment. And then of course we have the explosive armament. Interesting at first glance, but sadly lacking in potency. The first of these armaments you can get are the mines. 20 in total with a payload of 20 kilograms of TNT each. Not the greatest payload, but enough for coastal vessels and good enough to punch a big hole in destroyers. Because let's not forget, you will see destroyers and other tough opponents rather frequently at this battle rating. Personally however, I don't think I'll ever equip these mines. Mines require an aggressive playstyle to be used somewhat effectively, and I don't think the 201k quite has that capability. But I would recommend you experiment, they're not so massive as to be obvious targets, but they're an explosive hazard nonetheless. Then there's the anti-submarine mortars at the front. There are 4 quintuple tubes for a total of 20 tubes, but the 201k carries 40 spare mortar shells too, for a total of 60 of these mortar shells. And mortars they certainly are, with a very tall arc and a payload of 32 kilograms of TNT per shell. And seeing as you launch four of them at a time, that payload is 128 kilograms of TNT. Impressive. But these launchers are rather limited. First of all, they only fire forwards of the ship. Meaning that you have to aim your ship in order to get these mortars on target. And don't forget, the frontly mounted dual 25mm mount cannot fire forwards. So to aim these mortars you basically have to give up on the possibility of shooting the opponent. And that's where the second shortcoming comes into play. The rather short maximum range of 1200 meters, which makes them extremely situational. So again, experiment with them, but don't expect too much out of them. Then comes mobility, not particularly notable, being neither fast nor slow for a sub chaser, with a top speed varying between 44 and 52 km an hour. The turning circle is pretty standard too. I do think that the 201k is a bit slow to get up to speed and turn the rudder, but nothing deal breaking. As for survivability, the 201k isn't different from her tech 3 counterpart, the 201m. Both of them being noticeably resilient to smaller autocannons, not immune by any stretch of the imagination, but a bit more resistant. The ammo looks rather vulnerable, but I've yet to lose my ship because of the detonation. Though I don't know how much the rather large storage of mortar shells affects this. All in all, the survivability of MPK PR-201K is pretty alright. Another thing that I'll quickly mention is that both the 201M and the 201K comes equipped with a radar, which is very much helpful for spotting aerial threats early. When it comes to playstyle, I recommend staying on the defensive. The somewhat lackluster damage output and the large dead zone to the front of the ship limit your possibilities for aggressive playstyles. Whether you use the 45 or dual 25mm guns is up to you, but I personally recommend using the 25s for their higher damage output. 
and at the same time the 45 isn't a bad anti-air gun thanks to its high velocity shells. I should mention though that the battle rating of 3.3 is not a fun or very friendly BR for coastal vessels, so prepare yourself if you're considering getting MPK PR-201K. Now, the all-important question. Is MPK PR-201K worth it? No. Just no. It is at best a side grade to the Tech 3 PR-201M. As a matter of fact, the 45mm gun on the rear is pretty much the only difference between the two. And as I said earlier, it can actually be seen as a worse gun than the dual 25mm mount it replaces. And not only does the 201K get outshined by the 201M in performance, they both have the exact same economic modifiers and the modification RP cost. And yes, in case you didn't know, the 201K is not a premium ship and comes stock. Technically speaking, 201K's second tier of modifications are cheaper because she has more of them, with the total RP differences only 200 RP. And then, after all this, what does MPK PR201K actually cost? 10 to 11,000 Golden Eagles maximum. Now, that's not to say you can actually get the ship for free, and again, these are the maximum costs of it. The minimum cost, technically speaking, is only a thousand Golden Eagles if you missed one star. But do I even need to tell you if this is a fair cost or not? If you really do want this vessel, wait for it to appear on the marketplace, as PR-201K is a coupon vehicle. I don't think it'll be an expensive vessel on the market, but don't hold me to my word on that, I am not a market expert. And if you manage to just get it for free while playing naval, then enjoy the somewhat mediocre addition to an otherwise alright 3.3 lineup for the Russians. And that's it really, Operation Winter is pretty much done, and it was rather mediocre for us naval guys. But the year has only just begun, let's wait and see what else will be coming at us. Goodbye, and may your seas be calm.